Hello, fabulous scholars. So last time Odd was talking with the frost giant that had fooled Odin and Thor and Loki, trying to find out what he wanted from all of this. And he said, the sun, the moon, and Freya. And then Odd asked, why? Do you remember why he wanted all those things? Because they're beautiful. He wants beauty. Um, let's see here. And then he says that his brothers, more frost giants, are coming. But let's see. Um, Od or Odd remembered what he had seen in the pool the previous night. He said, do you really think your brothers are on the way? Uh, said the frost giant. Um, they may be. I mean, they all said they would if I did. It's just that I don't think any of them actually expected me to conquer this place. And they all have things to do, farms and houses and children and wives. I don't think they really want to come down to the hot lands and play soldiers guarding a bunch of grumpy gods. And I suppose they can't all be betrothed, that means engaged, to lovely Freya. Lucky them, said the frost giant darkly. She's beautiful. Oh, yes, she is beautiful. I'll give you that. He shook his head. Icicles fell from his hair and crashed, tinkling on the rocks beneath. She's got a carriage pulled by cats, you know. I tried stroking them. He held up the index figure of his right hand. It was covered in scratches and cuts. She said it was my own fault that I'd got them overexcited. Remember, here's a picture of Freya in her carriage being driven by cats. Maddie, I'm about ready to hit you to a carriage. What do you think? Okay. <sighs> she is beautiful, he said again and sighed. But she only comes up to the top of my foot. She shouts louder than a giantess when she's angry. And she's always angry. But you can't go home when you've won, said Odd. Exactly. You wait here in this hot, horrible place for reinforcements who don't want to come. Well, the locals hate you. So go home, said Odd. Tell them I beat you. He wasn't smiling now. The frost giant looked at Odd, and Odd looked at the frost giant. The frost giant said, you're too small to fight. You'd have to outwit me. Odd nodded. My mother used to tell me stories about boys who tricked giants. In one of them, they had a stone throwing contest, but the boy had a bird, not a stone, and it went up into the air and then just kept going. I'd never fall for that one, said the giant. Anyway, birds, they just head for the nearest tree. I am trying, said Odd, to allow you to go home with your honor intact and a whole skin. You aren't making it any easier for me. The giant said, a whole skin? You banished Thor to Midgard, said Odd, yet he's back now. It's only a matter of time till he gets here. The giant blinked, but I have his hammer. I turned it into this boulder I'm sitting on. Sitting on the boulder. Go home. But if I take Freya back to Jotunheim, she'll just shout at me and make everything worse. And if I take Thor's hammer, he'll just come after it. And one day he'll get it and then he'll kill me. Odd nodded in agreement. It was true. He knew it was. When, in the years that followed, the gods told this tale late at night in their great hall, they always hesitated at this point, because in a moment, Odd will reach into his jerkins, like his, his overshirt, and pull out something carved of wood, and none of them, try how they might, was certain what it was. Some of the gods claimed that it was a wooden key, and some said it was a heart. There was a school of thought that maintained that what Odd had presented the giant with was a realistic carving of Thor's hammer. 
and that the giant had been unable to tell real from false and had fled in terror. It was none of these things. Before he took it out, Odd said, My father met my mother when our village was raiding somewhere in Scotland. That's far to the south of us. He discovered her trying to hide her father's sheep in a cave, and she was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. So he brought her and the sheep home. On the voyage home, he said that she was so beautiful she lit up the world, and she did. She lit up his world like the summer sun. Picture of Odd's mother sailing from Scotland to the Scandinavian Peninsula. This is before you were born, said the frost giant. True, said Odd, but I saw it. How? Odd knew without being told that it would be very, very wrong to mention the pool in the forest to the frost giant, let alone the shapes that he had seen moving in the pool the night before. He lied, but it was the truth also. He said, I saw it in my father's eyes. He loved her, and a few years ago he started to make something for her, but he left it unfinished, and then he didn't come back to finish it. So last night I finished it for him. At first, I didn't know how it was meant to look, and then I saw her. I mean, it's as I imagine her, my mother, when they just met, taken from her people in her land, but brave and determined, and not ever going to give in to fear or grief or loneliness. The giant said nothing. Odd said, you came here for beauty, didn't you? And you can't go back empty-handed. He reached into his jerkin and took out the thing he had carved. His father's carving, which he had finished. It was his mother, as she had looked before he was born. It was the finest thing Odd had ever made, and it was beautiful. The frost giant squinted at it, and then, just for a moment, smiled. He put the carved head into his pouch and he said, It is remarkable and lovely. Yes, I will take this back to me to Jotunheim and it will brighten my hall. The frost giant hesitated and then he said a little wistfully, Do you think I should say goodbye to Lady Freya? Odd said, If you do, she'll probably shout at you some more. Or beg me to take her with me, said the frost giant. Odd could have sworn he shivered when he said that. The frost giant took a step away from Odd, and as he moved away, he grew. He went from being the size of a high hill to being the size of a mountain. Then he reached an arm up into the gray of the winter sky. His hand vanished in the cloud. I think I need good weather to leave in said the giant, something to hide my tracks and make me hard to follow. Odd could not quite see what the frost giant did, but when he lowered his hand, snow began to fall in huge white flakes that spun and tumbled and obscured the world. The giant began to lumber away into the blizzard. Hey, called Odd, I don't know your name. But the figure did not hear him. Or if it did, it did not answer, and in moments it was lost to sight. Next time, scholars.